Hi guys. <clears throat> oh, it is another cold, gray, gloomy, yuck, depressing day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Are we ever going to get to the end of November? Are we at the end of November? <coughs> no, we're not. It's Tuesday, November 29th, 2022. And uh, so anyway, guys, I'm probably going to start sounding a little bit like a broken record here because uh, I, I don't know what rock I have been living under as a doomer for the uh, past however many years this uh, outfit called Medium.com has been in existence. But good Lord, you know, I signed up I joined uh, medium.com a few days ago. I think you can still get that half price off today and tomorrow uh, <clears throat> for $25 a year for full access. And, and, and anyway, guys, uh, <laughs> I have just, I have fallen in to a pit of doom and gloom that I literally had no idea existed. Uh, that this bottomless pit of planetary existential despair was sitting here right at my fingertips uh, every day. And uh, so since I did pony up the $25 and became a, a, an official member of medium.com, so every day, every day now, when I wake up and just turn on my email, not once a month, not once a week, every single day, uh, this costs me seven cents. For seven cents, uh, I get what they call the daily digest. And I'm thinking that uh, I, I could just turn this channel pretty much in to uh, opening up the Daily Digest, reading you just their suggestions, their suggestions for doomers, and just, you know, basically throw a dart uh, and, and, and pick one of these uh, mini essays from voices you've, you know of and folks you have never heard of. And so this is the Medium Daily Digest, this is one day, an average Tuesday in late 2022, Tuesday, November 29th. Of course, they start off every day, and I'm assuming Umer Hack, who is the undisputed godfather of doom uh, on Medium.com, uh, Umer Hack, uh, I, I'm guessing, is churning out one of these book-length essays pretty much every day now. Uh, I, I, I'm thinking this guy, he is, uh, I bow down to Umer Hack as being the undisputed king of the doomers, at least here on medium.com. So we're going to start with Umer and we're going to go read the headlines uh, and you can join up and uh, get this yourself for seven cents. Or you can just let me read it to you every day. Umer Hack, why fascism is returning to the world and what America is teaching the world about breaking the laws of history. Jessica Wildfire <coughs> asking the question, what is so great about civilization? It stinks. Okay, here is Lanny Rose. After the collapse, what am I willing to give up for our low energy future? One way or another, we are headed toward a low energy future. As a civilization, we have reached the end of, well, you have to go on the uh, rest of the story to answer the question. We have reached the end of 
Okay, we just heard from Richard Lowenthal. Uh, what do we have today from Richard? The collapsing relationship between freedom and civilization. Hyper-individualism and civilization cannot coexist. Here is a fellow, Martin Edick. You cannot live in Florida anymore. Stop kidding yourselves. You could die. I guess if you live anywhere but Florida, you will never die. Okay, here's another one from Lanny. I actually just got an email from Lanny. I'm, I'm already making good friends. Lanny is my new tranny friend. Lanny the tranny from Santa Cruz. Uh, how long the decline? Doomer Lanny is back, bitches. Capitalism is doomed. Democracy is doomed. A climate change apocalypse has... And then you gotta go on to her... Uh, <clears throat> okay... Here is a fellow never heard of him called Glenn Hendricks from the Age of Awareness. Quit obsessing about climate change. What you do or do not do no longer matters. Quit worrying about going vegan or recycling, riding a bicycle to work, or buying a Tesla. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. Well, I think we're going to go with Glenn, uh, unless something comes. Let's see. Uh, we might go with that one. Okay, here's a fellow named Steve Bull, and his uh, daily, I guess pretty much every day or a few times a week, he has uh, today's contemplation on collapse cometh. Yes, here is a fellow Mike Meyer. Everything is terrible, but I am fine, asterisks. We are not fine, but short-term thinking rules. Well, this one sounds a lot like uh, the one I was just talking about what you do or don't do no longer matters. This is from the Pathless Pilgrim. Relax. We are all doomed anyway. <clears throat> okay, here's, uh, I don't know, male or female, using the letter B for their first name. B. Keen. Oh, oh this is, uh, now, now all of these articles were not written yesterday. Most of these articles were written like in the past month. So uh, this was written uh, right before humans hit 8 billion. On Tuesday, humankind begins to die out. Not our problem though, so pour yourself a drink and toast the end of times. How about Jake Meeks? Jake Meeks, how to plan for a climate crisis near you? Yes, I've been around human conflicts for most of my adult life. Okay, here is Peter Burns from uh, some outfit called Predict. Predict. <clears throat> when will we hit the Earth's tipping points, according to scientists. Are we close to the point of return? The point of no return? How about Carl J. Peterson from Dialogue and Discourse? Losing sight of the horizon. <clears throat> we have become a society more concerned about what lies directly in front of us than the effect of our, well, 
go on the article and read it. Uh, all right, here is a uh, takedown of Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming Andrew Martin is having some fun with this one. Why famous scientist Nikola Tesla believed he had cured stupidity. One of the most brilliant minds in history believed he had found a way to increase intelligence. <laughs> anyway, guys, what's it going to be? Uh, here, should we go with relax? We're all doomed anyway. Everything is terrible, but I'm fine. All right, we're going to go quit obsessing about climate change. What you do or don't do no longer matters. Take it away, Brother Glenn Hendricks, from his blog, Age of Awareness. I have no idea who this person is. Glenn Hendricks describes himself as an artist writer, poet, inventor, and entrepreneur. Sounds like a du busy man. Okay, uh, Glenn, tell us why uh, we should quit obsessing about climate change. <clears throat> quit worrying about going vegan or recycling or riding a bicycle to work or buying a Tesla instead of that Ford F-650 pickup you've always wanted in order to save the planet. You are off the hook. It's out of your hands. You can do these things if it makes you feel better, but they are not going to change the big picture. Whatever you do does not matter. Unless you are a head of state, king, president, prime minister, or other grand poobah, it is above your pay grade. If you are able to vote for people of power, that is what is left for you to do. Other than that, nothing. According to scientists, the only way to keep the planet's temperature from increasing 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit is to immediately phase out all fossil fuel infrastructure and devices. As soon as existing coal, oil, or gas plants reach their engineered lifespans, instead of refurbishing, we must shut them down. If we don't, the estimates for increasing temperature start going up at 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit, positive feedback loops of evaporating Arctic methane could, could, could kick in. Methane is 21 times better at warming our atmosphere than CO2. The warmer temps then evaporate the methane the methane makes the atmosphere warmer, it evaporates more methane. You get the picture. I don't want to be a Donnie Downer or a Cassandra, but how likely do you think shutting down the fossil fuel industry is? The industry has just invested billions upon billions on natural gas liquefaction plants to easily transport this fuel around the world. They are not giving that up without a tooth and nail knock down drag out and they have the money to do it. There are 25 countries whose oil percentage of exports range from Malaysia's 22.3% to Iraq's 99.8%. The trucking, railways, shipping, 
and airline industries would have to be completely transformed to electric or hydrogen propulsion. This will be as reluctant as oil and gas to give it up. They will be as reluctant as oil and gas to give it up. All 195 countries would require state-ordained laws banning the use of fossil fuels entirely. There are still vast numbers of people in Africa that gather around campfires and stoves burning firewood or coal just like they did thousands of years ago. What are they going to use? And uh, nowhere in this rant uh, does he mention, probably because he's never considered, that if we stop using fossil fuels that one half of the planet would be dead in the first growing season because global industrial agriculture, which a planet of 8 billion people is 100% dependent upon, is in itself 100% dependent upon fossil fuels which is another way of saying a planet of 8 billion people is 100% dependent on fossil fuels in order not to starve to death. Do your math. Maybe I'll leave a comment. All right. This, I guess meaning today, this is the most pivotal point in the history of man. We only get one shot at this. If we blow it, we won't get a comparable situation for millions of years, if ever. If mankind does have a worldwide civilization by then, we will have forgotten all of this, this choice we had. Save the planet or just get along and ignore it until it is too late. Scientists are saying our planet is doomed, but all I hear on the news is anything but that, you know, but that we're doomed. We are a society in denial trying to collectively whistle past the graveyard. Our weathermen don't even talk about it on the local news. It might be construed as political. Hmm. It might upset people. We are so polite and civilized in our, how do you pronounce this word, denouement? D-E-N-O-U-E-M-E-N-T. Is it denouement? My French is, uh, but we all know what that word means. We are so polite and civilized in our downfall. <clears throat> Since it is off our individual shoulders now, we should give more thought about how we tell our children. Obviously, nowhere, uh, anywhere in this fellow, I do not know if uh, he is a breeder or not. I'm guessing that he probably is. Since it is off our individual shoulders now, maybe we should give more thought about how we tell our children what is happening and what to expect in the future. Hopefully, hopefully they won't kick you in the shins when they finally understand what you are talking about. How do we look someone like Greta Thunberg, Greta Thunberg in the face and tell her we screwed up in the worst possible way? She will probably spit in your eye and tell you to fuck off and keep riding that bike to work. She is, well, this, was, this essay is actually a couple of years old. She is or was up for a Nobel Prize for her admonitions to do something about climate change. In reality, Greta Thunberg 
should be voted queen of the world because that is exactly what is needed right now. Some central charismatic figure with smarts and determination to do what is right, what is required. It's not really our fault. Besides being stupid and greedy, we are genetically handicapped to deal with this situation. We simply don't live long enough to plan ahead. By planning ahead, I don't mean decades. I mean centuries. The reason is that people with money and power, the people with the means to do something, just don't care. They would have to give up some of that money and power to change things. They figure they won't be around to suffer the consequences of climate change anyway, so they just don't give a damn. It would require, it would, it would require biblically long lifetimes to plan ahead for the human race. For now and the near future, we can at most hope to live to a hundred, not the 969 years of Methuselah. If you were going to be around for the consequences of your actions or inactions for as long as he would, he was, you would care. Our one ray of our one ray our one ray of hope is artificial intelligence. I'm thinking he's being ironic with this, I'm assuming. I, I, I can't I honestly don't know if he's being ironic. Pundits say a generalized AI, the singularity, will be here within 20 years. It will have the lifetime and the smarts to rationally plan ahead for a viable future for the Earth. Maybe, by the grace of God, AI, meaning the singularity, will take over and guide the human race rationally into the future instead of selling us as cheap world-wrecking slaves to the first aliens that drop by. So, tell your children, assuming you have children, so tell your children you are sorry for what is going on with the climate, but it's not their fault or yours. Tell them some bad people made it too hard to do anything until it was too late. Tell them you will vote for people that might help with the problem. Maybe if we elect the right leaders and they do the right things, there is still time. Tell them to study science and engineering so that someday they might help with a solution or figure out adaptations to deal with it. Or you can just put that whole talk off for later. I won't blame you. You are only human. <laughs> there you go. So uh, already forgotten this man's name, Glenn Hendricks. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we will see. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a doomsday sermon pretty much every day here on Collapse Chronicles. It, it, you know, it's it's already noon, and uh, I have not even bothered going on over the main uh, to the mainstream media. I'm I'm going to have to go over to the mainstream media to get away uh, from the doom and gloom. I'm going to have to go read about some damn, uh, I don't know, some horrific 
uh, you know, gruesome murder. Uh, give me some good old fashioned serial killers. You know, give me, you know, give me some damn, uh, I, I, I don't know, uh, what, what else, uh, to, to cheer me up from the doom and gloom. Anyway, get out there and enjoy being human while you still can. Do you enjoy being human? Would you like to be a human? So, would you like to be a human or not? I want to know, would you like to be a human, Sancho Panza? Hmm. Bye, guys.